Hey y'all, it's Bear, and today I have 12 books that are going to self-destruct in 12 months. If you're not familiar with this concept, um, it was created by Becca, I believe, from Becca and the Books, and essentially I took a look at my TBR shelf, and I pulled off 12 books, and I said, you know what, I haven't read these yet. I pass these up a lot. So this is kind of a challenge to myself. If I don't read these 12 books um, a year to the day that this video goes up, then I have to unhaul them. Anything that is not read by the 12 month mark has to be unhauled. I did make a rule whenever choosing books for this video that I would not choose books that were sent as gifts or books that were sent to me by authors individually. However, things that I purchased myself or things that publishers sent to me were fair game. If you've been around my channel for a while, you probably saw a video that I did talking about how booktube fucked up my reading, how reading for content creation's purposes messed with my reading, made booktube not fun, made reading not fun, and it really affected me. Some of these books, actually I think about half of these books, I was interested in reading, but I obtained specifically for videos or readathons. I think it'll be really interesting to look at these books now with this new perspective that I have where I don't have to read for a readathon every month. I don't have to get this done for that video. Like it's okay to be a little bit more flexible on myself. First is going to be a Shark Beach by Chris Jameson. This is um, very deep blue sea vibes. This is about a family who goes on vacation to the beach in Florida um, amidst a hurricane and a research facility full of sharks gets like swept away by the hurricane. The sharks escape the research facility. They start attacking everyone who stayed behind during the hurricane. This was originally going to be a book that I read for my readathon, Read by Daylight. If you remember Read by Daylight that I started at the start of the year that ended up flopping and I couldn't make it through six months of it. Um, yeah, this was going to be a book that I read for Read by Daylight and I never did. I do want to bring Red by Daylight back. I have a video later in the month detailing that a little bit more. But yeah, this one, it sounds so interesting. It sounds like something that I would love, right? Like killer sharks set in Florida, dumb college kids and like a family being attacked by sharks. That sounds like something that's totally at my wheelhouse. Next we have one that I've A, never heard anyone on booktube talk about. I've only seen a couple of Goodreads reviews for it and that is Lies Like Poison by Chelsea Pitcher. This cover is gorgeous. I feel like this could have been like a bookstagram book. This follows three girls named Poppy, Lily, and Belladonna who would do anything for their best friend named Raven. And whenever they find out that Raven's stepmother is abusing him, they come up with a plan that they are going to kill the stepmom. And then I think they chicken out, but then three years later, the stepmom actually gets killed by being poisoned. I don't know, this one sounded like fun. This one was also gonna be for, um, read by daylight have the obsession by jesse q sutanto and i had a specific vlog that i was going to do to highlight this book but i never got around to filming it so might it still happen in the future i don't know my relationship with themed reading vlogs is still a little weird and it's about a girl named delilah who's being stalked by a boy named logan and she is fucking sick of it so it's kind of like a dark revenge story of this girl reclaiming her power and saying like fuck this creepy stalker dude and I've heard it's pretty gory. Next we have one that I purchased because it was actually disrecommended to me. I had a video planned where I was going to read books that people told me not to read and that's Universal Harvester by John Darnielle. This one is about a man who works at a kind of blockbuster video rental style thing in this small town. People keep returning the tape saying that there's something weird recorded on it. There's like a glitch on the tape. I believe it's like a culty farm book which sounds totally like something that's in my wheelhouse. And we have one that I've heard very little about as well and that is The Majesties by Tiffany Zhao. Um, I follow the author on Instagram. The author's always been very sweet every time we've interacted and I did also plan to do this one for a Red by Daylight villain. <laughs> this one follows a woman named Gwendolyn who is the sole survivor of her sister poisoning the entire extended family at their family reunion. Like, everyone's dead except for Gwendolyn. Like, why did Estella do it? What's going on? You know, they live a very lavish, rich lifestyle, so like, what happened here? But I'm very excited to read it. It once again has the whole poisoning thing. It has like family drama. It has like this luxe, like, rich lifestyle that I like to read about. So I think this one could be a five star. And we have a short story collection called Tales from the Talking Board. This one was recommended to me by a couple of people on Twitter. And I started this one and I got like 30 pages into it and I just put it down and never picked it back up. I was 
trying to like read a story a night and that doesn't work for me. So this is going to be on my list. I love short story collections. I don't know. There was just something about this one that I just had to put it down. The next two are books that were for the same video. First one is A Hundred Fathoms Below by Stephen L. Kent and Nicholas Kaufman. And this one I've talked about on my channel as like a historical fiction submarine vampire disease story. I got quite a ways through this. I really enjoyed it. It's upside down, that's why I couldn't find the chapter. I was reading it for a vlog and I was just getting burnt out on the vlog and I just had to like put it down and I was like, I can't do it anymore. I'm not filming this vlog anymore. I'm scrapping it. Then we have another one for that same video and that is The Day the Sun Died by Jan Leonke. This one is about a boy who lives in this village. He realizes that he is the only person in the whole village who is awake and everyone else in the village is asleep and dreaming and just like going about their day to day. This sounds fucking terrifying to me. This one was also for that video and I keep telling myself, oh, I'm gonna do the video and I, like, I'm not going to. Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. I said in a recent video that if I did not read this one by the end of 2021, I was going to unhaul it. I am going to try and read this one by the end of 2021, but by putting it in this video, I am giving myself quite a bit of wiggle room in case that doesn't happen. I'm currently reading this one, so if I DNF it again, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> And this is basically like a reimagining of Scooby-Doo. It follows these characters who were like crime-solving mystery kids whenever they were younger. And now that they are like disenfranchised, like 20-somethings, they decide to revisit the location of their past mystery because something's telling them they need to. And they discover that like maybe it wasn't just a man in a mask, maybe it was like some ancient eldritch terror Living in the Swamp. Loom Town by Ronald L. Smith. This one I am very excited to read. I am only putting it on this list because I want to read it preferably by the end of the year. And this one follows a boy who gets a job at this like mansion in town. He lives on like this, you can see this like coastal fishing town and that's the mansion he gets a job at. But he finds out that his new boss maybe not be a human, maybe is dabbling in some things that he shouldn't be dabbling in, maybe is putting their entire coastal town at risk of Eldritch Terrors. Then we have a booktube staple. This was one of the most popular YA horror books on booktube whenever I started watching it. Like as a viewer, all the OG popular booktubers got me very excited to read this book. And that is 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstad. This was also going to be a Rip by Daylight book that didn't happen. And I, I do want to give it a shot. I did DNF it though. And this one follows three teenagers who essentially get a chance by NASA to become the first teenagers to walk on the moon. I want to understand the hype for this book. It does terrify me a little bit though because I, the, con the concept of space and thinking on a level that big fucks me up and makes me cry. And then finally we have the one book that by all rights I should have already read and that is We Can Only Save Ourselves by Alison Wisdom. If you watch my um, booktube fucked up my reading video. This is a book I specifically mentioned by name because I picked it up without knowing anything about it. This is one that I went to the bookstore, I saw in the bookstore, had never heard of it, had never seen a Goodreads poster, a blog review, or a Instagram picture or anything. I never heard of it. I saw it in the bookstore. I read the synopsis. I bought it. I thought it sounded cool. And this one follows a girl named Alice who's like valedictorian, class president, high school, perfect cheerleader. She has like the perfect life. And then one day she commits an act of vandalism the night before she's gonna be crowned homecoming queen and runs away to join this guy's like cult of wives to live in his house. During like that stint of time, I trained my brain to like look at any book and be like, how can I make a video concept out of this? So this one is one that I am constantly having to put off because I keep telling myself like, what if I made a video about, what if I did a themed reading vlog where I read cult books? What if I did a themed reading vlog where I read cheerleader horror books? What if I did this or that? And I have to pull myself out of it and remind myself that this is a book that I'm going to read for fun, not because I am obligated to by some fake pressure that I put on myself because of people on the internet. That's all I have for you today. Those are the 12 books that I'm going to try and read within the next 12 months. And as an accountability thing, I am going to be adding um, a self-destruct card to my board game TBR cards.
If you enjoyed this video, let me know you did by leaving a thumbs up, subscribing, hitting the bell, sharing as you see fit, all of that good stuff, as well as answering the comment question of the day. Comment question of the day, let me know a book that you've been putting off and why you've been putting it off. And if you don't have time, you don't have the spoons, you don't have an answer, or you don't want to answer, let me know you made it all the way until the end of the video by leaving me an emoji, preferably a yellow heart or a smiley face emoticon. All my social media links as well as Becca's original video will be linked downstairs, so make sure you go check that out. And yeah. All right, I hope you have a wonderful whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time with another video. Thank you for watching. Okay, cool, fine. Here's a bonus comment question for if you stuck around to the end of the outro. Let me know which of these books you think I should read first and which one I'm most likely to enjoy. Okay, that's the real end now. Okay, bye.